English. But not quite. And maybe you'll enjoy this, this little story. This guy was also a soccer fanatic, and he was a Pirates fan. <clears throat> and he eventually got married. But he was, you know, he, he attended the Pirates pirate practice session. The under 20 games. You know, and, and so he, soccer was his whole life. He hardly spent any time at home. And one day his wife confronted him. She said, you know, I think you like, you love pirates more than you love me. He says, I love sundowns more than I love you. <laughs> and my, my, one of my favorite soccer stories is this. In this amateur league there in the UK, this guy got concussed. And they took him to the edge of the field and, and he was like, so Biggie Dima God, man. And they tell the coach, he's, he's got concussion. He says, great, tell him he's Ronaldo and take him back onto the field. <laughs> anyway, back to serious business. Silver linings, right? Silver linings. A year ago, I would have chosen a different picture. Uh, well, let's say uh, 15, 14, 12, 13, 13 months ago. Who was our president then? We were embarrassed to have that guy as the head of state of the most influential economy on this continent. Nigeria is marginally larger than us, but hell, I don't want to live in Lagos, uh, quite frankly. Um, and if you're really feeling down, especially if you're a Stormers fan, work, plumbing work, building work, masonry, whatever the case may be, so that they can get those jobs which are, in relatively scarce uh, supply. So if you can go from zero income, to some, some income, 5,000 rand a month, 3,000 rand a month. I mean, look at the maths. I mean, you've done something incredible about combating inequality, am I right? For the years. So don't confuse Donald Trump's personality, which is a definition of a disorder, <laughs> with his policies. He's implemented some pretty nifty policies. He's given tax breaks. He's given tax breaks to the middle class in the United States. Not like George Bush Jr. He gave it to the ultra rich. So what are they going to do with the extra money? You know? Not like, oh, I think I'm going to spend it. They're going to give it to momentum. <laughs> um, Zimbabwe and uh, Zambia, one of my favorite examples, because them for 40 years had a GDP between two and three times the size of Zambia for obvious reasons. Better manufacturing sector, tourism industry, proximity to South Africa, mining, diversified. And then they also started with this nonsense, and now look where Zambia is. Um, and what we did is we ran an economic model. We looked at the average decline. Now, Petro SA loses 14.5 billion rand in one year. Dudu Miyeni has to contribute 5.7 at SAA. Irregular municipal expenditure, another 14.8. You add them together and you can build 650,000 RDP houses. And you can create 210,000 jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you here categorically today that all our problems can be solved. Not overnight, but all our problems can be solved. All you need, two things. The right policies and the right skills. And what Jacob Zuma did, and this was the most devious part of his, his tenure, is he used cadre deployment as a smokescreen for appointing the most incompetent, dishonest people in charge of SAA, ESCOM, Danel, you name it, Petro SA, and in government departments. Who remembers the Minister of Modern Energy Affairs? I think he's gone into dairy farming now. <laughs> I mean, he produces a charter for, for, for mining which nobody in the world, nobody in the world that wants to invest in mining will, will, will accept this. It's just absolutely crazy. Zero coordination between economic policy and businesses out there that need to make that policy practical. And that is a sea change that has now taken place. Mr. Ramaphosa has already appointed one expert panel for agriculture. I have a very good friend, Wadile Sushlobo, who did the peer review for my impact assessment on radical land reform. He's a member of that panel. He will probably continue to appoint panels of experts for this industry as well, probably. And I would be really surprised if somebody like Dani or, or, or Johan isn't invited at some point in time to advise them because he is smart enough to realize a bureaucrat sitting in a government department doesn't really know how to run a business. And if we can run our businesses more smoothly, we create more jobs. And if the minute you create a job, can you hear the cash registers lean itself? Taxes, bum, 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 bum. The minute you create a job, 
income tax, value added tax, fuel tax. Reminds me of that little story. And I think Andy will give me credit. I wrote a, new, a lot of new jokes today. You did. <laughs> it was a challenge. So but this one, this one is one of my favorites. This, this, the, this guy took his little boy to this bistro in the Rosebank every Saturday morning, meets his buddies there and they have a chat about the weather and the sport. <clears throat> and his boy enjoys this because he's got this little trick. He tosses a one hand point into the air, catches it neatly between his teeth. And he's very popular. This morning something goes wrong. The young honey butter feel of an stuck. And everybody does everything wrong, and a doppel mom slams her rug, and, and panic ensues. Suddenly a gentleman steps out of the bistro, neatly dressed, almost like me. And he grabs the boy by the nuts, and he squeezes it real hard. Boom, out comes the coin. And the father is crying tears of joy. I mean, he embraces this guy. He says, what are you, a paramedic? He says, no, I work for Saab. <laughs> If your currency is weak for too long, then obviously you're coining it on your export. Your imports become in inevitably expensive, and your balance of payments, your trade balance, fixes your exchange rate. As long as you have investment grade status with Moody's, it will always recover. It was an easy one to call, like taking candy from a baby. Uh, I don't always get it right, but when I do, I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> and there you can see. This is a three-month moving average, but I can tell you that in December, South Africa had the second highest trade surplus in our history. In our history. And that's the main reason why the land stayed. Uh, now it's a little bit too because of the load shedding and, and uh, so on, but it gives our exporters a bit of a breathing space. And maybe that's the reason why Kumba is back, back at 380. Pleasant surprise to me, because that's my pension. That and momentum, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Business confidence has stabilized. The nuclear power project was canned, which would have been incredibly expensive. Surrenders of long-term insurance policies have declined dramatically after Monikana. The trend is really good. Um, and then the foreign direct investment. Now, under the Zuptas, it went to 0.7% of GDP. For perspective, Angola's in that three-year period was 14. And they had Osatos and landmines which is a bad combination. <laughs> They've since got a better president, Joe Lorenzo, Jado, nickname, uh, and he's implementing market reforms and he's telling the Chinese to get out of the country, which is a good thing. Now, if Mr. Ramaphosa gets 50% of his target, that's where we will be, and he's already at 